But first, the hysterical media elite are rushing to defend an architect of The Voice after she declared the No case was based in racism and stupidity. Every time the No case raises one of their arguments, if you start pulling it apart, you get down to base racism. I'm sorry to say it, but that's where it lands. Or just sheer stupidity. Now, some interpreted that statement to slander all No voters, including the local paper which ran this headline. But Australian journalists were hysterical of that interpretation, labelling it fake news. They even twisted the story to make it sound like Langton was talking only about campaigners, not the case for a no vote in general. Let's listen to her words very carefully again. Every time the no case raises one of their arguments, if you start pulling it apart, you get down to base racism. I'm sorry to say it, but that's where it lands. Or just sheer stupidity. Langton labels the case, as in the philosophy, the ideas behind why someone would vote no as being racist. She doesn't mention the word campaign at all until she is forced to explain to Australians what on earth she meant. Now, you might say that the no case refers to the official campaigners, or you might say it nets everyone who agrees with the propositions contained in arguments supporting a no vote, as in the voters. Because words matter. Meaning matters. And if you say something extremely inflammatory, invoking racism and calling people stupid, you will get called out for it. Own your comments. Instead, Langton threatened to sue journalists over the semantics in a bid to silence her critics. Truly appalling stuff. But the ABC, the ABC lapped it up. I don't believe that most Australians are racist, and I'm certainly not a racist. But I, what I was saying was that the claims made by the No campaign are based in racism and stupidity. And that's a completely different um, kind of statement altogether. And the next day it got worse for all of those journalists who had rushed to defend Langton. Sky News can reveal that other video of Marsha Langton calling No voters and social workers racist. After the Bunbury Herald revealed yesterday Ms Langton had called no campaigners either stupid or racist, Ms Langton has insisted she was not referring to no voters but to the campaign. But in July at a University of Queensland event, Ms Langton called some no voters racist. The SMH was just one day earlier pushing a narrative that Langton would never call voters racist. But when they printed that story, Langton had already publicly done just that. The lazy journalists had rushed to her defence without so much as a basic Google search. And ironically, those journalists who dared to push back were labelled fake news and misinformation by a cohort of people who are supposed to be professional journalists. Well, joining me on the panel this week is Sky News host Caroline DeRusso and Sky News contributor Joe Hildebrand. Now, Joe, obviously yes. you've, been, you've been pushing for the yes. yes. Uh, you've been making the campaign whenever yes. you can. What did you make what of What a story? great week we've had, Jack. Hasn't it been fantastic? Pass me the hemlock. Um, yeah, I was, I was in Darwin um, and obviously just written a couple of columns about The Voice, trying to still back it in despite the fact there's obviously declining support in the polls. Largely, it has to be said, because of comments like these, and then you actually get something on top of this, just two weeks after the launch in which the South Australian Premier, Peter Malinowska, said, whatever you do, do not accuse our opponents of racism and ignorance. That just turns people against us. And that was at the official voice launch in Adelaide just two weeks ago, and two weeks later, you've got Marsha Langton saying, well, the no case is racist and stupid, which... I have to say, is a pretty great irony, given how uh, well thought out these comments were. This is, um, you know, perhaps the most consoling thing that Marsha can tell herself is that the campaign was probably on life support before she made the comments, but it's fair to say that the comments probably flicked the switch. Caroline, a lot of the journalists, when they first saw this story, were defending... I guess I would say the semantics of how you would interpret the comments. But, uh, you know, even Patricia Carvelis on the ABC made the point uh, in an interview with Langton that, well, what's really the difference? 
Yeah, well, and that is that is a fair enough point. I mean, if you say the no case, you're talking about the substantive case. When you Then she goes back and tries to fix it by talking about the claims. Well, the claims are the submissions that are in the case. So it's just the part of the whole. It, it actually makes no sense. And the more that you try and polish uh, that proverbial, you actually make it a lot worse. But what I did think was really interesting um, about this whole saga was that the Bunbury Herald broke this new broke this story and it just goes to show that a good yarn is a good yarn it doesn't matter where you break it it can become national news and it had the mm. entire um, of the 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 national gallery the uh, press gallery and the national media scrambling. Um, it was described on Twitter as something like um, credibility laundering or something like that. Like the media, th they couldn't do enough to try and fix this. Um, and I think ultimately they probably just damaged themselves. Yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, it was a story that came from a local journalist. Mm. I, I don't know about this strategy of threatening legal action against journalists. It's... Obviously, the Australian has changed the headline. Yeah. Um, what, that doesn't help prosecute the argument that, you know, that the power is not there to be... Well, I, th I think, I mean, high-profile people who have the platform for a right of reply when they feel like they've been wronged yeah. or defamed or whatever, um, the, the merits of those people threatening legal action or, or taking legal action... Is, is, I, I would question that anyway. I think if you're in the, the public sphere, I've certainly had plenty of mean things said about me over the time. Likewise, uh, <laughs> and and, um, and you know, and and you know, when you when you sue somebody, generally speaking, there are two losers, no matter who wins. But yeah. ag again, I mean, is, is she going to sue this local paper? Like, who I, I don't know who she's contemplating, who she's seek, seeking legal advice. Um, in regards to, is it the Bunbury Herald, which is I mean, a local regional surely, paper? Surely owned by... she can't. I mean, it, the, the semantics aside, I, the commentators. No, I, I don't. No, I don't think. I don't think she actually has any intention of. I can't speak to her mind, but I, I think she's just trying to to make the point and trying to sort of intimidate other media outlets into not repeating the claims or in, into sort of showing how you know. We all know it's the Ben Robert Smith thing, isn't it? I'm so outraged by these out and out fabrications. I'm going to take legal action because that's and just by threatening it. it shows how um, how convinced I am of my own um, innocence and purity. But again, as Cara says, the semantics of, you know, whether you're talking about the ideas or the claims or the people who are presumably stupid and racist enough to have fallen for such stupid and racist claims that you're, you're characterising as such, it almost sort of doesn't matter. The point is, why invoke racism anyway? Why invoke stupidity anyway in any relation to a group of people who you are trying to get to support you? We are, I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm just an art student, I'm not a mathematician, but 38% is not a majority. We need to get people who are currently voting no or intending to vote no to vote yes. And you do not get them over the line by saying either A, you're racist and you're stupid, or B, the bunkum you're falling for is racist and stupid. Therefore, what a dumb patsy you must be. You get it by appealing to the better angels of their nature, by saying, we understand why you might have concerns, we understand why the idea of a voice to parliament in the constitution might be confronting but here's why it's okay here's why it's not and here's why it could be really useful and every minute we spend talking about Marsha Langton labeling the no case racist or stupid is another minute we don't have to talk about the benefits of the voice yeah. or reassure people as to why it's a safe thing and that is the double tragedy on what has just been yet another wasted week and an own goal kicked by the yes campaign or those associated with it and not the no campaign who supposedly is so stupid and racist. They're not the ones suffering this week. So if they're so stupid, I'd hate to think what we are. Yeah, I can, I can feel your frustration because you're out here obviously making these reasonable arguments and then you must feel as if you're being undercut at every, <laughs> at every opportunity. Every column and you write making the moderate case. Um, and not to, and, but others as well. There's, you know, people like Dean Parkin who worked so hard and who was so careful yeah. and, and inclusive in their language. There are, there are plenty of others who would just... All their good work gets brought undone every time something like this happens. It's a national tragedy.